The mariposario consists of a large netted area for the butterflies, surrounded on three sides by secondary forest. Many animals come from the forest to pay a visit, like this Nicoya variegated squirrel, Sciurus variegatoides atrirufus. Nothing enlivens the morning routine like watching a squirrel urinate on a branch. At any time, Hundreds of caterpillars and butterflies live their lives inside the mariposario's vast net. The surrounding forest is home to many predators who constantly seek ingress, hoping to take advantage of this rich food supply. Spiders in the family Araneidae, the orb weavers, are particularly troublesome. Every morning we patrol the garden for fresh webs. When I first arrived, I fancied myself a spider apologist and carefully removed them from the garden. However, after a few weeks of seeing them eat our caterpillars and our butterflies, I declared war on any that I found under the net and began to crush them between my hands. None of them bit me, but some of them, like this arrowhead Micratena, had sharp enough spines to puncture the skin of my palm. Another spiky customer was this Gasteracanta cancriformis, whose peculiar bright coloration made it possible to view her beating heart through the shell of her abdomen. Lizards also seek out a buffet breakfast of captive butterflies. This barred whiptail, Ameiva undulata, has crept in somehow and lurks in the underbrush. When detected, these animals are detained and brought in for inspection. This male is found to have a swollen and dirty penis dangling from a gap in his armor. Now that he's been removed from the garden, he's free to attend his own business, and he scuttles away off the railing. The fallen karau tree behind the compound continues to attract insects to its sweet, sweet corpse. Today's visitors include these stingless bees, probably in the genus Trigona. On the opposite side of the compound, a horde of aggressive, stinging wasps has taken up residence near the front door. Joshua describes the remedy. There's a particularly large stingy bee that was looking like it wanted to make a home out of a uh, space Right underneath the balcony of one of the guest house, so I figured I might uh, dress up in my Sunday best and uh, persuade them otherwise. And have you accomplished that feat? <laughs> that remains to be seen. Okay. It's still a long day today. Well, what's the next step? The next step is to uh, <clears throat> let uh, my particular little cocktail sort of like soak in there and then um, bang the hell out of it with uh, a stick of some sort in order to see if I raise any ruckus. Excellent. Yeah. Good luck. Why, thank you, sir. Take it a good one. Is that big good? Yeah, that was great. Can I see it? Okay. These rove beetles, family Staphylinidae, are attracted to rotten fruit. Unlike a more typical beetle, they only have a partial suit of armor covering their abdomens. All beetles start out looking somewhat wormy, but like caterpillars, undergo metamorphosis to attain the adult form. 
This flower beetle larva, family Chrysomelidae, constructs a little house that looks like a thorn. Removed from its house, we see a protrusion on its back, which enables it to grip the house as it walks. Salt, a rare commodity in a tropical jungle, is eagerly chewed off my finger. Flower beetles are very diverse in the tropics, but when this one pupates, it may end up looking something like this. Here is another flower beetle larva. Instead of a hard shell, it has a fan of twisted stakes protruding from its abdomen. These are hardened spikes of excrement, and they serve as a protective shield for the larva. When this one becomes an adult, we call it a tortoise beetle and it may look something like this. Leaf-footed bugs, family Coriidae, are uncommon visitors to the garden. This is the flag-footed bug, Anisocelis flavolineata. The nymphs of the mesquite bug, Thasus acutangulus, congregate on a sunny leaf. This is mass aposematism, the word given to a colorful display that is nature's code for poison. If disturbed, the nymphs spray anal fluid and secrete toxins from their abdomens. The last segment of their antennae bears receptors for a special pheromone that causes displaced bugs to re-aggregate. Like many large heteroptera, mesquite bugs are often parasitized by mites. Adults of Thasus acutangulus are much less colorful. They are rather drab, heavy-bodied bugs. By day, a curious gray cylinder dangles motionless from a tree. At night, its tenant emerges and chews leaves. This is a giant species of psychid moth caterpillar that has been collected in Costa Rica before, but not identified. The adult stage, if it exists, has not yet been documented. María Morfa Azul y Posa tiene cinco hermanas mayores, Peperuda, Bira Bira, Nipui Sipui y Papalote Pita. En esta sociedad, las niñas más exquisitas son también las más gruesas. El lunes, María pidió a su hermana, Nipui Sipui, ¿por qué se come la ensalada? Porque el sabor agradame mucho, hermanita María, dice Nipui Sipui, y necesito los nutrientes para crecer. El miércoles, María pidió a su hermana, Pira, pira, ¿por qué cagamos treinta veces a la hora? Debido a la ensalada contiene moléculas indigeribles, dice Pira, pira. El viernes, María pidió a su hermana, Peperuda, ¿durante cuántos años ha vivido nuestra raza en la selva? Más de un millar, dice Peperuda. Más que hay hojas en la barba del abuelito de los árboles. El domingo María pidió a su hermana. Papalotepita, ¿por qué no es la selva llena de pelotas de nuestro excremento? ¿Por qué hay setitas y potrequitos quien lo comen después de la lluvia haya caído? Dice Papalotepita. Así que María comerá y crecerá para dos meses, hasta que ella está tan gorda como sus hermanas.
Can a bird sit on a chair, or is he compelled to stand? White-throated magpie jays, Calochita Formosa, patrol the entire region in raucous gangs called murders. They belong to the same family as ravens, chuffs, and crows, and are very intelligent. They can learn new skills from each other by observation, so a single individual can immediately transfer a new talent or method to dozens of others in the murder. These birds are expert foragers and are often seen around town. The male long-tailed mannequin, Hiroxifia linearis, seeks sidekicks. Males form teams of two or three to attract females by complex performances of song and dance. If she is charmed, she will only mate with the alpha male. The teams can persist for several seasons, despite the sidekick's complete absence of action. In the hollow of a tree, a strange form swirls around. This is a hanging crane fly, family Tychopteridae. Why they dance thus remains a mystery. They belong to the suborder Nematocera, which includes frail-bodied flies with long, delicate legs, like this crane fly. Some of them, like these chironomids, gather in vast numbers to dance in the afternoon sunlight. At dawn, Aedes aegypti, a female mosquito, performs yoga. Her task today will require focus and concentration. She must suck blood from one of the mammals on the property in order to nourish her litter of vampirelings. After a one-night stand and a disease-spreading bite, she finds a bucket of water left carelessly in the forest. She exudes eggs onto a raft. She hopes they will hatch into healthy larvae that will grow in the bucket undetected. But she is under arrest. She flees the scene, but is quickly brought to justice. Her offspring are also taken into custody, and then they are turned over to the ants for immediate extirpation. Aedes aegypti transmits the dengue fever, a painful tropical disease. Look closely on leaves and stems around the garden and you'll see tiny, colorful insects with dense spines on their rear legs. These are sharpshooters, hoppers in the family Cicadelidae, who suck juices from plants. This diet is rich in fluid, but poor in nutrition, so excess liquid is gathered into little balls and then flung away. After a week of speculation, the egg case on the side of the house opens. These tiny nymphs are clearly some kind of hopper, but they look like a cross between an aphid and an elephant seal. Under the microscope, more details emerge. With the help of international scientists like Gert Hermans, we are eventually able to determine that these are the nymphs of Copidocephala guttata a large plant hopper that is often seen around the Mariposario at night.
right, so it looks like we got, I'm taking some video here, I hope you don't mind. I don't care. You don't care? I mean, this is pretty solid stuff, you know? Okay, well, would you like to introduce it? What's happening here? Uh, yeah, I'd love to. Um, this is the National Dish of Canada. It's called Poutine. It's a traditional dish that is cooked with fries, as you can see on the far left outlet over here. And we have gravy, which is the second important ingredient for this cookie in the middle. And then we got some cheese going over there on the far right. Okay, and are these the, the same quality and kind of ingredients that you would use back home in Toronto? Um, oh, you can do what you can in Costa Rica. It's pretty damn close. And I think it will probably be the best poutine I've ever had. Sweet. All right. Well, thanks very much. Oh, no problem. <laughs> so it looks like it's almost ready. It is. It is almost ready. And we're going to adorn it with something? Yeah. All we need to do now is drizzle the gravy onto the fries. Okay. To make this a Canadian uh, poutine. Wow. Yeah. Maybe put a close-up. Hot still? I think it's hot enough. Cool. <laughs> it's a little bit congealed, but, you know. <laughs> I'm going to eat it. Oh, my God. This is so funny. Delicious, actually. <laughs> if only we could all get it. No, I don't know anything about that. I was just talking about the poutine. And it, it looks a little bit dubious, but uh, I'm about to try my first bite here. Sorry about the head on your beard. Oh, okay. Mm. Yes. What do you think? The nourishment is palatable. All four food groups. All four food groups. <laughs> yeah, it's good stuff. Thank you.